Hi, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. I've had a huge number of emails with people asking me, how do I market these? What's the best way to go about it? You know, how do I really make money selling these chairs? I thought I'd take time today to discuss all that with you. First, I'd like to mention something for those of you who may be fans of the page. Uh, that we have five days left on our Father's Day sale for our woodworking mallets. These are the mallets that I use every day in my shop. We build them and we sell them usually once a year, on occasion twice a year, and this year we are selling them for Father's Day. Uh, we make them all here, uh, custom made by hand, out of 10 different species of exotic wood, and we've actually got three different sizes of mallets. And all of the mallets that we do are just clear, natural, no stain on them, all the colors, and, and textures and stuff that you see, this is just the natural color of the exotic wood species that we use from around the world. So if you're interested in getting one, there'll be a link in the description below. And like I said, they're all half price for the next five days. There's a coupon code in the description below and a link to the website as to where to get one. So if you're interested, uh, go over there and pick one out for yourself. And uh, it really helps us out too. This is kind of the way that we support the channel throughout the year. Uh, the channel doesn't really earn a ton of money on YouTube. In fact, very little. Uh, but we do uh, have sales like this on occasion to help us out and help us fund our videos. One cool thing about the mallets that we sell is they're virtually indestructible. This wood is so much denser and harder than most domestic woods. There's just about nothing that you can do to it that would break it. So it's a, something that would last many, many lifetimes in the shop. And if you're not a big fan of exotics, that's no problem. We sell domestics as well. We have maple, cherry, walnut, and oak. I'm going to see if I can name them all here for you to put a color to the species. First one is Red Heart, then Osage Orange below, then Lignum Vitae, then Purple Heart, then Cocobolo, Wenge, Leopardwood, Paduke, Bacote up top, and East Indian Rosewood on the lower right. That way if you're looking there, you'll know what to get. We'll do it again here. Red Heart, Osage, Lignum, Purple Heart, Cocobolo, Wenge, Leopardwood, Paduke, Bacote, and Rosewood. Domestics here, Maple, Walnut, Cherry, and Oak. And you can have any mallet in any combination of head and handle. These here of course are the same head and same handle but you can put them in any order that you like. All of the ones pictured here are our full-size hammers. They're about 15 inches tall and the head is almost six inches long. We also sell a mid-size. It looks almost exactly the same. It's just a smaller version and we have a micro size something quite a bit smaller which is just really fun to play with. And all the exotics that we have are available in every size. All right, so let's jump back into what you came here for and let's talk about marketing and selling these chairs. In the background, everything that you're seeing are chairs that were built by viewers. These are people who watch the video, they're building the chairs. Some of them built them just for themselves or their families or friends, uh, but most of them are actually building these chairs and actively turning a profit selling them. And I'll tell you my thoughts and I'll tell you what's been successful for a lot of the viewers. And if you didn't already know, we have highly detailed plans and templates available for all of our Adirondack chairs. There's a link to that in the description below. I'll also put a link to the comprehensive, detailed step-by-step -step videos that show you exactly how to build each one. Let's start at the very beginning. The first thing you have to do is learn how to build the chair. You really need to build one for yourself, just a prototype. Use the cheapest wood that you can get, like some pine from the big box store, or maybe pressure treated wood, whatever is most cost effective in your area. You certainly can't sell them if you don't know how to build them, and you're gonna have a really hard time selling them if you don't build them well. They do have to look good. That's kind of one of the most critical things is you've got to build a chair that looks good and that's going to take practice. It doesn't take a ton of practice, but it definitely takes practice. Another thing that happens with practice is you're going to get faster, significantly faster. Most new users, the first time someone builds one, they tell me it takes them sometimes five or six days to build a chair and put the whole thing together. That's not uncommon. I wouldn't be surprised if it took someone a whole week or a week and a half even. With each successive chair, you're going to be getting considerably faster. Let me give you an example. My daughter and I, granted it's two of us, but in the shop, we can actually, with the CNC cutting curves in the background, we can actually build four a day. If we don't use the CNC and I cut everything on the bandsaw, we can still build three a day. And for us, a full day is six hours, but we have a lot of experience building them. We have several people in our community who are already building a chair or a chair and a half a day. So it doesn't take too long to get to that level of proficiency. 
Now, how do you build a chair, your prototype, and maybe even a chair or two for a friend or family member, you've got some experience under your belt, and by now your chair should be looking first rate. The next thing you need to do is build the very best chair that you can, the one that you wanna sell the most of. Maybe it's a cedar chair, maybe it's a nice looking chair with pressure treated lumber that doesn't have too many knots in it. After that, it is supremely critical that you take that chair to a nice photogenic location. Maybe that's your backyard, maybe it's on a patio, maybe it's on a patio near a campfire. Maybe you have a pool in your backyard, set it near the pool. Maybe you live near a beach or a shore or someplace or a lake where you can take it and set it up there. Or the woods, something nearby where you can set it up in a photogenic environment and capture a really good photograph, shoot from several different angles. You want a photograph that looks good, like ad quality, like you're a commercial manufacturer wanting to market your product. I can't tell you how important it is that your client sees these chairs in a really beautiful and usable location. When you send me pictures of your chairs in your shop with you know, the clutter of your tools around sawdust on the floor, I can still see, I can identify right away that you've done a beautiful job and the chair looks great. Your customer can't see that. Your customer has to see the chair in the final using environment. They have to see it in a pristine or a clean or a neat location in a place where they might use it or where they might dream to use it. Maybe they don't have a pool, but it doesn't matter. They wanna see your chair in a pretty setting. That makes a big, big difference. I sold these chairs and other pieces of furniture that we built for many years before I ever realized the importance of this. One day, we built a set of chairs for a client who had a half a million dollar home. They had a beautiful two-story deck, that wraparound porch, that was a swimming pool. The environment was great. They even had a little uh, fireplace grill that was set up on their deck. The chairs were set up there, and I asked them if I could take a photograph of it in that setting because it just looked so good. Once I did that, I started showing that to other people. My sales volume doubled immediately. Everybody was just drawn to the picture. Most of the people I sold to didn't have homes that nice, but it made a big, big difference that they got to see these chairs in a really pretty setting. And after that, I realized the importance of it. And every time I built something, I always tried to get a good photograph of it in a pristine location. And I use the customers as often as I can. Every time I drop off a piece of furniture, I ask them, hey, can I take a shot of this? You know, right there, it looks so pretty setting up there. Everybody's happy to comply. And that really helps your sales. You develop a really good portfolio that way. And that's a way to show people your work. Okay, let's talk about the next hurdle to overcome when you're selling these. Uh, this hurdle is actually common to everybody that does woodworking. And that is that homemade or custom built projects cost more money. They cost a lot more than someone who can go to Ikea and pick up a piece of furniture and a whole lot more than somebody who can go over to Home Depot and buy a plastic Adirondack chair. So you, you're going you're gonna to think in your mind that you have competition, that you have to overcome these things, but it's actually pretty simple. The people buying those products are not your clientele. Those aren't your customers. Those people don't want custom pieces. They don't want custom woodworking. They, for the most part, can't afford custom woodworking. I mean, and that's okay. Not everybody can. Custom woodworking, people who want it, that's just a small percentage of the population. I wouldn't worry about it because it's a big enough percentage that you can still make a really good living at it. But the thing is, is you have to be aware of who your clientele is and, and, and who they aren't. And you can't waste your time or your energy or spend any money, certainly, marketing towards people who don't want and can't afford your stuff. So if you're like me, when I first started woodworking and I'm, I, I built myself a bookcase and I've got, you know, $150 into the bookcase. This is back in the 80s. <laughs> uh, so maybe it's not so much money today, but it was a ton of money back then. And, you know, I wanted to start selling these things and we could go to places like Oak Express and and uh, just other furniture stores. And you could buy a bookcase that was much bigger, much nicer, had more wood in it for far less than I could even pay for the wood for a smaller project. And I thought to myself, what's going to be impossible? Nobody could ever, ever make money doing woodworking because things simply cost too much. And, and that's just not true. There are two aspects to the value of woodworking that you have that nothing else can offer. First, you can customize it. You can use whatever wood they want. 
stain it whatever color they want, and add custom things like put their name on it. All that's really relatively simple to do. So you can make something that's full custom. You can't walk into IKEA and get anything custom. Second is, and really it's simple, but it's just as important, maybe more important, is that you can offer a product that nobody else has. This chair, for example, we put hundreds of hours of research and design and development into this chair. This thing is 100% unique. There is nothing out there on the market that has compound curves on the back that sits this comfortably. We went through maybe a dozen prototypes. I had all sorts of people, basically every friend and neighbor and family member I had, sit in my various prototypes until we developed it just right. And the nice thing is, is when you have a good product or you design or develop product that looks good or have access to, nobody else has those. No, if somebody is fixated on your chair, they like your chair, they're going to buy it. It doesn't matter to them if it costs 500 and they can go over someplace else and get a chair for 150 or 200. If they want your chair, they're going to buy it. People who have money, if they want your chair, they're going to buy it. I have found this to be true time and time again. Now, your job is to find your market. That's the secret. You have to find your market for the product that you're selling. You're going to sell different types of products in your lifetime. Each one's going to have a slightly different market. All of them are going to be slightly upscale or very upscale markets. But the key is to find your market. Once you're in there, you'll know it and you'll be able to keep working within your market. But you have to find it. Now, I don't care where you live. Somewhere within 50 miles of your home or your shop, there is a market for your products. It may not be the place you live in, because I know my neighbors can't afford the chairs and the things that I make, but I do know that within 20 minutes in two different directions, there are at least three different suburbs where the homes are three times the value of what I'm living in right now, and all of them can afford the stuff that I make. So how do I break into those markets? Well, I try everything. If I'm serious about selling, I'm serious about making money, and I paid my way through college doing this, so I, I learned a lot, but I try everything all at once. I use Facebook Marketplace. I take these pictures, the best pictures that I have of chairs that I make, and I put an ad on Facebook Marketplace selling these things. Rich people use Facebook too. I do the same thing on Craigslist. I put an ad, put these on Craigslist. I put an ad on Etsy. I sell them through Etsy, but to local for local pickup only. I even had an ad on eBay for local pickup only. There are two different flea markets within about a half an hour of my home. One's a little more upscale than the other, but I've gone to both flea markets and I've displayed my product and I've sold things through both flea markets. There's a home and garden show that comes to town. I've displayed things there and sold it. And now we get into things that are even better than the stuff I've mentioned so far. I have a cousin who builds decks, porches and patios and decks for a living. And obviously he sells these to customers who have more money because putting on a big patio on the back of your home, a big deck, a big wooden deck, it's not cheap. I gave him a handful of pictures and a small photo album of some of the chairs, patio tables and benches, things like that that I've made. And I asked him to show them to his customers. He told me about half to a third of all of his customers ask him, hey, where do I get deck furniture? Where do I get patio furniture? He shows them these things. About every third or fourth client likes it and they buy one. And I'll tell you what, once you get into a neighborhood like that, a nicer neighborhood where one person buys a couple of your chairs, all of their neighbors tend to see that. And all of their neighbors are in the same economic class as them. And once you're in, Obviously, you got to do the very best job that you can, make your work beautiful, and once your na their neighbors see the beautiful work that you do, they'll be calling you. They'll want one too. It's not uncommon for me to get into a new neighborhood, sell a pair of chairs to somebody, and then wind up selling another hundred over the course of the next year to year and a half to all of their neighbors and so on. When I was younger, I used to take Taekwondo, and one of my friends who was in that is a real estate agent today, and he sells nice homes, and I've asked him to do the same thing. When he's in a nicer neighborhood, a nicer home, a lot of these have big, nice outdoor areas for people to sit and barbecue, you know, enjoy the outdoors, and he has a little one of my little portfolios too. It's just a four by six photo album with about a dozen of the pictures of the stuff that I make. My chairs are, of course, the most prominent, but also patio table, a planter box, picnic table, things like that. And he shows it to him. He says, hey, if you ever need any patio furniture, some outdoor chairs, a friend of mine makes these. And he shows him the picture. 
and these people love them. Now, I don't sell quite as many through here as I do through my cousin who sells decks, but I still get sales from there. And one sale is all you really need. You just get one sale and you get into that market, you get into that neighborhood. You make a sale into a neighborhood where people can afford your product, you make the job as beautiful as you can, the neighbors see it, the neighbors like it, sooner or later, they'll be calling you for work as well. And your work spreads neighborhoods. It doesn't just stay in one little local neighborhood, you know, of five or six blocks. Because the people who live in these neighborhoods who have bought your product, well, they have friends, family, relatives, many of which who are in the same socio socioeconomic class. And their friends come over for barbecues on the weekends, things like that. They see the products too. And usually they're interested too. And that leads to more sales, which then puts my product into yet another new neighborhood. And it just spreads from there. I would say after hitting my heavy marketing for about a year, every time I came out with a new product, um, all I ever had to do was, was hit it for that brief period of time. And then I always had more work that I could handle all through word of mouth. And it works the exact same everywhere, all across the United States. I've got a friend in Texas now who watches our YouTube videos. I actually became a friend of his through our YouTube channel, helped him build the first chairs, you know, talked to him a lot over the phone. And right now he's booked out past the end of the year. He's booking into January for delivery on chairs. I don't know how many he's booked out, but it's it's more than a hundred. And it just happens. People start calling you, calling you, calling you. This guy wants four, this guy wants five. And you know, my, my friend in Texas, he's, he's asking me, how can he hire help? He wants to hire help. And <clears throat> that's a whole issue I don't really want to talk about because I think it's important to maintain quality control. But it doesn't take long before you start getting all the calls that you want and then you're then you still have problems, of course, because your problem set shifts. Now you have to deal with, you know, how can I get these out quicker? Um, but that's definitely a topic for another video. So I've helped a lot of people start woodworking businesses over the years, and I feel like I could just go on about this for days and days. But I don't want to bore you with a lot of stuff that you might not be interested in. So I'm just going to kind of cut it short here. If this is the type of video you're interested in, if you if you want more information, more detailed information, any, any specific types of information, let me know. I can make another video. I could I can make a video like this on some of the different products that I make that I think sell well. Um, I can tell you nothing sells as good as an Adirondack chair. In my experience, it's just the number one thing that people buy. But I'm happy to make more videos and, and give more information if you're interested. If you happen to already support us on Patreon, then you may already know this, but I give a lot of individualized help to a lot of our supporters over there. Um, I can always take the time. I have a little bit more time with those members and I, and I can help you flesh out your individual business goals or ideas and or at least, you know, give you pointers, things that, that I've done that worked for me. Uh, I don't mind talking to you. Several of our uh, Patreon supporters, they have my phone number and, uh, you know, we talk over the phone. It's a little bit easier than typing back and forth. Um, but short of that, if you're interested in more data, more information on things like this, just let me know. Leave a, a message uh, or comment down below or shoot me an email. Um, and if you're interested in supporting us on Patreon, there's a link to my Patreon page in the uh, description below the video. So to quickly rehash what we've talked about, and uh, the points I've talked about are really just kind of the broad strokes of the elements that are needed to be successful in this. You know, step one is to have a a successful product and through my entire woodworking career of 35 years nothing has ever sold better than us better for us than outdoor furniture and the Adirondack chair was the pinnacle of all of those things so start with a product that is successful step two is get some experience building that product you you can't just get a set of plans and and, and start selling your very first chair you got to build one for yourself see what it's like you know, and build a second one for a friend or a family member. By the time you hit your second or maybe your third one, you're gonna have a lot more experience and your product is gonna look really good. Step three is to take the best chair that you've made and put it in a really photogenic setting. It's gotta be in a beautiful place where a chair like this might be used. Step four is to use those photographs that you've taken and put it up for sale or offering in all of the different online marketplaces and venues that you have at your disposal. Think Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, Etsy, flea markets, craft shows, home and garden shows, fairs, and so on. And step five is to link up with people who can help you. A real estate agent, a porch or patio builder, anyone in those businesses 
get them a couple of your photographs, put a little album together, give them a kickback if they show your images to people and they sell. It'll work. It will get you into the markets and neighborhoods that you need to be in. Good luck, everyone. Let me know what you think about this style of video, and thanks to everybody who sent me pictures of their work. Thanks for watching.